Let's talk about this lawsuit. What made you stop, pause, and go, wait a minute, what's happening? Talk, uh -huh. Walk me through the process and the story. How did it start? How did it, how is it going? Right, okay, well let me first say, as a disclaimer, you can get all of the official information on PACER, okay. or Worth Media, we have a bunch of it updated there. Okay. Um, but the lawsuit is definitely not something that I wanted to do, right? Nobody takes on Goliath, um, a multi-billion dollar corporation, because they want clout, or mm -hmm. because you know they're being frivolous, right? Let me just point out that you <clears throat> are suing P-Valley or the production company. So the defendants, mm -hmm. um, as they are listed on PACER, are Lionsgate, mm -hmm. which is the parent company for Stars, which is the company who distributes it, mm -hmm. Katori Hall, who is the credited creator of P-Valley, and several other producers. I won't name them, um, but several other producers mm -hmm. as well. Um, and the reason all of those people are named is because we just want to get to the bottom of like how it happened, yeah. right? So. Um, the long and the short of it is that I did not want to pursue litigation. Number one, I wasn't looking for P-Valley. Mm -hmm. My husband actually was downstairs watching the stripper show. <laughs> That's what it's called in our house, In too. the mail cave, <laughs> in the man cave watching. Mm -hmm. And I just heard him saying, babe, babe, you got to come down here. You got to see this. You got to see this. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't. He comes upstairs. He's like, they got the bread suitcase and everything, babe. Like, it's just, you got to see it. And I'm like, you know what? And another thing had just happened. It was just that we had just gone through the whole Kelly Price COVID, you know, moment, mm -hmm. right? I just, or, or maybe shortly after, whatever, long story short, mm -hmm. I just did not, I had gone through the R&B Divas thing. Mm -hmm. um, I just did not um, want to pursue any claims or litigation. Mm -hmm. um, I thought there's just one or two things here that are similar, lead character similar, premise is similar. Then as I kind of just started to get calls from people like who literally were a part of the show, like, oh, okay, first of all, we didn't get paid for the play. Now you got the whole TV show. I'm like, uh, which is not my fault, by the way, because I haven't been paid for the play either. Mm. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, mm. we get into the bottom of all of it. But mm. um, long story short, I got calls from people. I watched it. I realized that the same beginning, the same middle, and the same end. It was mm. a casino plot. It was a male-oriented strip club owned by LBGTQIA member. I, f I felt like there were certain nuances and certain moments that were very similar, spot on, to the character Tata Burlesque. The fact that Tata in French, you know, slang for auntie, mm -hmm. right? So you got Uncle Clifford mm -hmm. versus auntie Tata Burlesque, Ooh. right? Um the vintage red suitcase in the beginning, the casino plot takeover, the homophobic antagonist who was just, you know, the, the interactions and the, mm -hmm. the references that were made between, you know, the owner of the club and the, and the homophobic person who was there mm -hmm. plotting to take over for a casino, mm -hmm. down to the fact that we, you know, the club was saved in the end by one of the dancers that nobody liked or nobody believed in, right? Mm. So there's so many nuances here and there. There are 57 comparisons, to be exact on Pacer what? and a lot of people look at it and they say well no it's not the same because you know it's a well they gave her 100 million dollars to develop that play into a series right we had a very very small shoestring budget last minute bunch of stuff you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it just um wasn't it was my first production you know we were just excited to to move this thing along so there are a lot of Things, I guess, that people look at, you know, when they look at P-Valley and Soul Kittens Cabaret and say, well, this isn't this and this isn't that. But I think what people have to remember is that, again, the CEO of Star said they gave Katori Hall $100 million to develop P-Valley. So oh there are going to be certain nuances and things that are not the same. But the beginning, middle, and end of the story is the same. And, you know, my hope is that we have the opportunity after three years of going back and forth to get mm -hmm. in front of a jury. That's what we're waiting for now. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we can find out what happened, because I do not know. I do know that I met with the CEO of Lionsgate mm -hmm. in between 2013 and 2014, mm -hmm. and I left all of my materials, including the DVD. I do know that he was involved in, in the P-Valley project, and you know we'd like to get to the bottom of, of, of how and why and when and where and who and where's Waldo. So there's no possibility that somebody came to your show unconsciously put it into your, their brain and was like, oh, you know what, I got a great idea, and came up 
with 57 different comparisons from yours to theirs. There's no possible way. I can, you know, we're waiting for a judge to determine that we can go before a jury and have down the to jury the red, determine. Down to the red suitcase, down to so many nuances. Like the way she goes over and gets the clothes off the rack. You know, one of my characters, Tata, says, take off this ridiculous dress and go get yourself a costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, P-Valley, he says, girl, what's your swag? Take out, you know, it's just mm-hmm. certain little nuances. Of course, words are going to be different. Yeah, sure. Wardrobe is going to be different. You got $100 million, so you're going to make some, bump some things up here mm-hmm. and there. Mm-hmm. But when we start talking about intellectual property, and mine was copyrighted in 2004, mm-hmm. right? When we start talking about beginning, middle, and end of story, I can't go anywhere, Mm -hmm. right? I can't come to Warner Brothers or any of the other networks and say, hey, listen, I've got this really incredible story about this beloved venue in the inner city Mm -hmm. that's being taken over by casinos. You're from Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know all those places downtown, Burt's, Baker's, Bomax. Mm -hmm. People were afraid that gentrification was actually going to happen. And it, I mean, you know, like if you go home now, then you see that, you know, it it happened, right? But that's a real story. Casinos Mm -hmm. really did come into the city. And some of those places that were lovable, beloved, Mm -hmm. you know, venues, right? Um, My mom was a jazz singer. One of the first people that I was ever introduced to as an LBGTQIA member did my hair. I'm not going to say her name and bring her into this, but Mm -hmm. everybody in Detroit knew her. She was a host. Mm -hmm. She was a... um, an incredible person and it was my first time I remember being like 11 years old like I'm confused like yeah. not knowing yeah, yeah, yeah. and as an artist those are my people mm-hmm. right I'm very very connected to that community of course. so it feels you know pretty terrible mm-hmm. to see someone else's um, I don't know what you want to call it somebody else's version Mm-hmm. of a story that you wrote it that wrote that's Years like ago. spot on yeah, right yeah, yeah. it's difficult to watch the award shows it's difficult to watch um all the awards and accolades because the people who worked on soul kittens over the years we've had numerous casts those mm-hmm. people worked really hard mm-hmm. and we have struggled to 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 pay the bills in every way mm. so to look and see that a company that i pitched this idea to whoa has now made I would imagine if you gave somebody $100 million to develop it, you've made a significant amount of money off of it, right? Mm. Um, Those people deserve, the people who have been involved with Soul Kittens from day one, deserve the opportunity to to reap the benefits of helping build and develop such a great story. So I'm fighting not just, I say this all the time, I'm not just fighting this war Mm -hmm. for myself. I'm fighting it because I believe that People have been taken advantage of. When you look at Eric Monty, who created Good Times and 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 what's happening. Yeah. When you look at Fully you know aware. allegedly, right? I'm not trying to pull people's lawsuits out of the woodwork. When you look at Sophia Stewart, right? When you look at all the young people who have reached out to me who have had properties and ideas that they feel have been taken. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a statement to to stand up for yours, no matter what. And there's a win in that. There's victory in just calling that out mm-hmm. and standing in your truth and saying, I'm not going to let you piss on me and tell me that it's raining. We're going to get to a jury, and we're going to talk about what happened. And we're going to, everybody's going to state their facts. They're telling me they don't think they're similar enough. Mm. I don't know how much more similar you get with 57 comparisons and the fact Down that I the left the materials briefcase, with the, the suitcase. Man, I don't know how much more similar Come you get, but we're going to find out. Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and comment. You never know when I might be in the comments. And also, thank you guys for continuing to watch.